Along the coast of the Pacific Ocean lies a mysterious world just beneath the waves. The residents of this bizarre community are beyond our wildest imagination. In this unpredictable and violent home, every creature must find a way to survive the pounding tides and an endless sea of enemies. Here, among the emerald forests and living rainbows, is a secret kingdom of life at the edge of the sea. Major funding for nature is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Major corporate support is made possible by Canon in our dedication to the preservation of nature and its never-ending beauty. In photographs, you can capture the wild and leave it as you found it. By Ford Motor Company, each year, parts for our new vehicles are made from more than 50 million recycled soda bottles, enough to cover a 400-acre lake shore to shore. Ford, dedicated to protecting the environment. And by TIAA Craft. For 80 years, the thoughtful choice in financial services for people in education and research. TIAA Craft, ensuring the future for those who shape it and by annual financial support from viewers like you. As I walk this lonely coast, I can smell the air sifting through the cedar trees and the surf breaking among the rocks. The moon overhead is a guiding mistress who drives all life with the steady pulse of her tides. Sometimes I'll pick up a broken shell and imagine what it must be like for an animal to live here amid howling wind and deluge. And always, the waves flinging themselves furiously against the shore. And it amazes me to think that for so many creatures, this is the perfect place to call home. Around the Earth, there is an empire that stretches for a million miles where the oceans surge against the shore. Life here flourishes in an explosion of oxygen and food. Imagine living in an endless underwater hurricane, and you might think of death and destruction. But here, the more violent it gets, the more bountiful life seems to become. The ragged coast of British Columbia is one of the most abundant and violent habitats on Earth, fed by powerful currents and a rich upwelling from the ocean depths.
The creatures that call this place home have evolved over millions of years to lead long, stable lives amid endless turmoil. It's a morning in March, just after a storm. The ocean rushes back to the shore. The tide is the one constant element in this world of unpredictable change. For some creatures, the deluge means blessed relief, but it can also sweep away everything in its path. It's a constant struggle to hang on. In the midst of all this upheaval, everyone tries to go about their own business, some stealing food right out from one another's mouth. The water deepens. In a bed of mussels, a languid battle for living space begins. Though it looks as if the mussels are sticking out their tongues, these are actually feet which secrete thin white threads of gluey fiber. In the aftermath of the storm, they use these threads to cement themselves back to the rock and to one another. By constantly renewing their foothold, the mussels can hang on to their precious bit of rock in the surf for as long as 50 years. Every nook and cranny down here is inhabited, and the competition is intense. This red rock crab evicts one of the tenants and moves in. Somebody else may be happy just to live on your back. This snail carries a whole metropolis of barnacles and limpets on its shell, which are in turn home to even smaller creatures. The rising tide brings out the locals, eager to explore the neighborhood. These hermit crabs live inside vacant snail shells. Like us, they're always looking for a bigger, better home, and they're willing to fight for it.
Another way to get a new place is to bang on the walls and drive the current tenant crazy. And if that doesn't work, you just reach in and yank him out. But sometimes it takes a while for the old tenant to accept his loss. This hermit crab wanders too close to a hungry rock crab. But the hermit gets away, homeless and totally naked. The rock crab discards his empty dinner plate and the hermit moves right back in. But as soon as he is resettled in his shell, the hermit crab heads straight back toward the pincers of doom. Another rock crab finds an easier way to capture a meal. He feeds on barnacles attached to the rocks. Shiners stick around to pick up the scraps. No matter how small, most crabs are predators that feed on the ocean floor. They're able to feed on a wide variety of food, an important advantage in a sea of competition. For animals that don't leave home to search for food, the competition is for the best real estate. Some creatures have found a way to take over an enormous area by cloning themselves. For anemones, reproduction is like a divorce. One unit becomes two. The anemone can produce a whole army of clones to colonize new territory. On the borders, the colony posts heavily armed soldiers. They attack neighboring colonies in a war for space that may last hundreds of years. These translucent knobs are deadly weapons. The tiny harpoon sticks in the enemy like a bee stinger and pumps in venom. The Red Army defends its colony across a no-man's land, keeping the White Army at bay. Just as things begin to settle down, the tide changes again. Somewhere out in the ocean, the moon's gravitational pull causes a great swelling in the sea beneath it, and the water draws away from the shore. The creatures that have adapted so well to underwater life 
must suddenly face all the strange and dangerous forces of the open air. The tide is down and the table is set. The guests at this banquet have different ways of dealing with the tricky business of eating seafood. A crow flies up and drops a clam like a bomb onto the rocks. But it doesn't always hit its mark. It's learned to go high enough to break the shell, but not so high that other birds can sneak in and steal its hard-earned feast. The scent of fresh food at low tide also lures hungry predators from the forest. This early in the year, the shoreline is the best place for a black bear to sniff out something to eat. A mink also heads to the shore, although a bit more tentatively. He must be careful not to become an item on the menu himself. The hungry bear finds a seafood snack, licking up tiny crabs with a modicum of effort. The crow tags behind to scrounge for leftovers, and the mink bags some big game. It's a warm spring day, and the heat drives the bear back to the shade of the woods. On a nearby beach, teenage sea lions horse around in the sun. Play fighting prepares the males for future battles for mates. To escape the heat, all they have to do is take the plunge into the cool Pacific waters. It's midday and getting very hot. The tide has dropped almost 10 feet, exposing animals that cling to the rocks 
to a whole new gang of predators. The only thing that can save them is the moon, which will eventually bring back the tide, pulling a protective blanket of water over them once again. But at this time of day, the tides are at their lowest. And it's not just predators that threaten the life at the edge of the sea. The kelp forests, which thrive underwater, now suffer in the heat and bright light. It's as if the sun and moon are continually doing battle for the soul of this ancient coast. The shallow tide pools heat up, and there's little oxygen left. These blood stars flop on their backs, inflate themselves, and breathe through their feet. The tide pool sculpin draws oxygen from the surface layer, but its cousin, the grunt sculpin, isn't adapted to these perilous conditions. It must pant, forcing water over its gills to extract what little oxygen remains. High tide is still a long way off. The sun turns the edge of the sea into a desert. It begins to cook the shellfish in their own juices. Mussels store up seawater, then slowly release it by panting. This evaporation cools them down, just as sweating cools us. Sea stars can't control water loss so they move toward moisture and shade. Anemones wrap themselves up and put on a coating of mucus to conserve the last vital drops of water. But if the tides deal out extreme hardships, they also bring the riches that make living here worthwhile. The turning of the tides is a bracing plunge back into frigid water and a flush of oxygen. Forces of sun and moon dictate a new tide and a whole new way of life every six hours and 12 minutes. It's a clockwork rhythm that has played itself out on this shore every day for millions of years. This turbulence fills the water with food particles and the anemones immediately send out their tentacles to pluck dinner from the currents. Snails come out from their hiding places to graze like a herd of wildebeest.
The abundant seaweed makes this a natural gathering place for plant eaters. And the plant eaters, in turn, attract predators. A sea star in hot pursuit of a limpet. It's hard to imagine a slower chase scene. It's a slow motion kill. The keyhole limpet doesn't even attempt to escape. It merely lifts its mantle, covering its shell with a smooth surface. The sea star can't get a grip. The limpet also happens to have a dangerous companion. If the sea star persists, the worm nips at its feet and drives it off. For this bed of mussels, the danger now comes from below, as bands of hunters advance with the rising tide. The mussels cannot escape. A rock crab heaves a mussel loose while sculpins wait for him to break open the shell. The fish move in like hungry jackals. Here along the coast, there's an endless supply of food, shelter, and oxygen. If only you can stand to live under the sledgehammer force of the surf. The edge of the sea is a narrow corridor of life. We see only the surface with its spectacular extremes. Just below, the habitat is more placid. It's a hideout for marauding killers like these sea stars. A few feet below the rolling surf, the kelp forest grows. Among its shadows live creatures of strange and beautiful shapes. Down here, protected from the turbulent waves above, animals can survive without a hard shell. Nudibranchs are among the most colorful and bizarre looking of the ocean's fleshy creatures.
The opalescent nudibranchs are particularly aggressive, but it's sometimes difficult to tell if they're fighting or mating. Fighting can end in cannibalism, but mating is an equal opportunity event. They are hermaphrodites, possessing both male and female organs. Either side, or both, can come away with its eggs fertilized. But a soft body does have its disadvantages. Some creatures rely on their skin for protection. Attached to the rocks, basket stars cannot escape from predators quickly, but use tiny spines to ward off their enemies. Though they may look like ferns of the sea, basket stars are actually relatives of the starfish. They use their long arms to surround and capture plankton swept past them in the current. Basket stars may have spines for protection, but sea urchins have taken this to the extreme. They appear to be one big ball of spines. They're plant eaters who live in vast communities called urchin barrens. One of the deadliest predators out here is the sunflower star. It has 24 long, flexible arms. They reach out in search of prey, which they chase down on 15,000 tube feet. An urchin escapes from one predator, only to trip and tumble towards another. A giant green anemone waits just below to make the catch and swallow it whole. The sunflower star persists. Unable to outrun its tormentor, this urchin lays down its spines and erects a defensive line. Long stalks armed with stinging jaws. The star lurches away with its enemy's stingers embedded in its flesh. Everybody has some trick to escape the sunflower star, even scallops. The scallop's mantle is fringed with tentacles to smell predators and eyes to sense menacing shadows. The mantle is also used to release jets of water to launch the scallops to safety. They're like flying dentures. The cockle uses its muscular foot to push off against the ground, leaping as fast as it can out of harm's way. A leather star approaches an anemone. 
which responds with what looks at first like a strange, sensual dance. But it's really thrashing from side to side in a desperate rush to escape. A muscular cone at the base inflates to help break its hold, and it swims to freedom. A rock crab notices this apparition and misses the danger snaking out from behind. This giant Pacific octopus is more than nine feet long, but it's completely boneless and can collapse itself to fit back into its lair. In the litter outside its den, hermit crabs scavenge on the remains of previous meals. It seems crabs are on everyone's menu today. This Irish lordfish has spotted tonight's main course. But the crab puts up a fight inside his mouth, and the fish spits him out. The crab's defense is merely an annoyance. The next time the Irish lord just takes one big gulp, swallowing the crab before he has a chance to protest. The tide is turning again, in the last act of an ocean whose clock ticks to the rhythms of the moon. The kelp flutters out to its full length, absorbing nutrients from the passing currents. The passage of the moon doesn't merely drive the tides. It also sets the stage for courtship for all the creatures at the edge of the sea. When tide and temperature are just right, male mussels get things started, launching their sperm like a message on the currents. Male and female cannot reach each other, so she releases her thread-like sacks of eggs, sending them off to their rendezvous.
the ochre star releases its sperm, which drift off like smoke on the wind. Nearby, a female's eggs come writhing out in response. They mingle on the slow currents. An abalone sends its eggs simmering up into the mix. With all these animals reproducing at the same time, barnacles can eat eggs at every meal. To spare their offspring from the same fate, they have internal fertilization, using a long penis which reaches out to a neighbor. Barnacles are at least assured that the sperm and egg will meet. But after the larvae develop, they are released from the safety of the shell to face the perils of the sea by themselves. Everyone feasts on the new life cast into the waves. A porcelain crab holds up specialized mouth parts to rake in the harvest. The sea urchins release a snowstorm of sperm and eggs, which spiral together on the current to create life. The tide will carry the larvae out to deeper water, but first they must run a gauntlet of killers. The translucent Melaby nudibranch uses a large hood to sweep up the passing larvae. It folds inward to draw the harvest down to its mouth, and then opens wide for more. These nudibranchs, anchored on the kelp, feast on the passing buffet, but they sometimes break free to find a new feeding ground and do a ghostly dance on the currents. At dawn, another dance of life and death is about to begin. Traveling from the open water, white-sided dolphins make their entrance at the edge of the sea.
Under the warmth of the March sun, something is stirring. The bald eagles arrive, standing like sentries in the treetops. They are watching and waiting for what now appears at the end of the rainbow. The sea is suddenly boiling with fish. The first frenzied school of herring dances up to the surface. The herring panic and swarm back down into the depths. But today is neap tide, the gentlest water of the lunar month. It's the best time for the herring to breed. So even with all their predators assembled, they must come to the coast. About three billion herring come to British Columbia each year, arriving in wave upon wave. The predators come in waves too. This is the feast they've all been waiting for. Those herring that escape the jaws of death begin to breed among the rocks and seaweed at the edge of the sea. Wriggling along a blade of grass stimulates the females to deposit their eggs, which will be fertilized by floating sperm. The females glue their eggs to the grass to give them a foothold against the currents. The males saturate the area with sperm, and the water turns milky white. This is the calmest the tides will be all month. By breeding on this day, the herring's offspring are less likely to be washed out to sea. But the herring lose huge numbers of eggs to predators, like these sticklebacks, and the hermit crab, which plucks them off like grapes. Everyone comes out for the feast. More than 26 million mouths feeding at this one spawning ground. The eggs are a respite from the usual business of eating one another.
The herring eggs will have to endure this onslaught for 14 days until they hatch. But at this spawning ground, there may be 800 billion eggs. That's more than all the predators put together can possibly eat. And the waves of adult fish are still coming. There's so many that it's hardly worth defending your catch. Sometimes it's too much trouble to capture your own herring. You can just bully some other bird and fish fall out of the sky. A younger eagle attempts this game of intimidation. But it fumbles the pickup. Each year, I come to this shore to share in the dance of life. I lift my face in the roar of wing beats, and everything suddenly connects. The birds have timed their migration with almost magical precision to take advantage of this bounty of life. It's as if all the forces of the solar system have woven together to make possible this one moment. Too soon, this exaltation of animals will disperse with bellies full to begin their own breeding seasons. And soon, this incredible abundance will vanish once again. I walk this coast humbled by the great events transpiring here. The endless reweaving of death into life on which the oceans and all of us depend. And amid such violence and grace, my spirit breaks loose of its moorings to drift with the tides and be nurtured at the edge of the sea. To learn more about what you've seen on this nature program, visit PBS online at www.pbs.org. Major funding for nature is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Major corporate support is made possible by Canon in our dedication to the preservation of nature and its never-ending beauty. In photographs, you can capture the wild and leave it as you found it. By Ford Motor Company, each year, parts for our new vehicles are made from more than 50 million recycled soda bottles, enough to cover a 400-acre lake shore to shore. Ford, dedicated to protecting the environment. And by TIAA Craft. For 80 years, the thoughtful choice in financial services for people in education and research. TIAA Craft, ensuring the future for those who shape it and by annual financial support from viewers like you.